Hold on, y'all gotta give me a, a minute to absorb this shit. I don't care if we get demonetized. <laughs> so good. It'd be worth it on this one. Huh? My brain, my brain is oozing out my ears right now, bro. Fuck. Why they have to do that to the baby? The baby. Why'd they do that to him? Tori. This is disgusting. I'm proud of them. <laughs> High five. Good job, guys. This was already one of my favorite songs anyway before. All right, I'm going to turn it off in a minute. Hold on. Uh, Alright, fuck. Let's just turn the shit off, man. I have a deep fucking appreciation for things that I like. Shit that I like, I like a lot. Like, so fucking much. What are some of those things? Music. Like, shit like that. This movie right here. This is... Uh, what movie is that for people who don't know? Uh, Ali uh, Covenant. Alien Covenant. It's the... It's the sequel to Prometheus, which is, I believe, oh shit, is the volume on? Oops. <laughs> which I believe is the prequel to the Alien franchise movie. It is, yeah. Okay. So that's weird. It's like in the future from here, but it predates the movies from the 70s. Kind huh? of weird paradox. Yeah. But this movie is amazing. We were talking about this. Uh, before we started filming. This is my favorite scene of this movie. I think this this part right here, okay, for y'all don't know, I'm gonna spoil it, motherfuckers. You should have seen it already. That guy's an android. He's not real. He's artificial intelligence. He created him, right? Well, he had the money to do it. The human is looking for his creator, for who created humans, right? Y'all had to see the first one to understand why. So the, the robot is like, hmm, you have, you're going to die one day. No, he says, you're looking for your creator. Here, I'm staring at mine. He says, you will die one day, and I won't. And then, the, look, the guy got jealous or he got angry. He got real human and made him walk all the way across the room to pour him some tea. The first time he said it, the robot was like, hmm? like, logically, like, why? Why would I come all the way over there? You can just reach in. He said, bring me the tea. He's like, all right, whatever, motherfucker. So, in this part, I don't know if you knew this, Sean, but that part is like years before this journey right here. It's before both the movies, mm -hmm. this and Prometheus. Okay. Because that guy's an old man on Prometheus. Right. And he's dead already here. Yeah. He died on Prometheus. So, he's young right here. Mm -hmm. So, that's really cool. I like, I love that shit. So, yo, we wasn't even... Planning to do a, a a show, a podcast today, but um, I've been doing the um, ask me questions on Instagram, and somebody asked me about depression. Have I ever been depressed? And I was like, hell yeah, I have, you know. And I wanted to just talk about it. Um, <clears throat> just break down the story. So a few years ago, you know, I, I talked about it in a documentary, all of that. Not in depth though. Not in depth just touch on the surface. So basically I had, I used to be fucking balling, rich. You know what I mean? Like just a lot of money every week. Money that, just a lot of money every week, weekly. And depending on how much of a risk I wanted to take that week or how much of a risk I wanted to put other people at, determine how much money I make. 50, $100,000 a week, whatever, right? So, 
my life like just collapsed on itself. My conscious, I'm a person that got conscious. So if I do something wrong, it don't sit right with me. It's hard for me to, I'm like, ah. So, but when you're making fast money, you find a million and one reasons to justify why you're doing it, right? Well, I'm not doing this. Well, nobody's getting hurt. I'm taking care of these people, you know, but wrong is wrong. We live in a society that has rules. If we agree to live in a society, we need to follow the rules, right? Like if we have a relationship, friendship or whatever, we have rules with each other. If we expect to stay friends, we got to follow those rules, you know, with any kind of commitment. So I was living outside of the rules. And it was eating at me, you know. Oftentimes I would think about my grandparents. My grandparents are such decent people. I was raised really well. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? A lot of times. But we'd be out. I spent 30 grand on a bar, just to buy the bar for the night. Stupid shit. And I'd be sitting there, everybody's fucking having fun and doing all this shit. And I'm just sitting there like, this is so fucking stupid. Why am I doing this? Fuck it. Get drunk, get more drunk. You know what I mean? Trying to take my mind away from reality of what it really was. Bro, I would, sometimes the alcohol wouldn't even, it wouldn't even take me out the reality. It's like, that was my curse. That my consciousness wouldn't allow it. Like, nope, you gotta, you gotta look at this for what it is. You're in this fake ass environment with these dim lights, crazy lights, you know, light show. It's loud music. You're inebriated like everybody else. So everybody in yourself feel cooler than what you really are. You can't really see people, but you can. You're sitting up on the back of the couch with all these fucking people around you. You know I mean? You got all these people around you. You know, everybody's treating you like you're important. You know, it is a somewhat of an intoxicating feeling. You know, whatever club I went to, Security, everybody just like, what's up? You good? You know, have people thrown out. All of that shit. I did all of that shit. I abused all of that shit. You know, um, before I had a store. And we didn't do shit there. It was just a store. Just really for, it was a front, really. But the store was like a meetup spot for the whole crew. Like before we went out. You know what I mean? And, um... No bullshit. Before we went out, it would be like, it'd be like 20, 30 cars of people. You know what I mean? Caravan, like presidential shit, real shit to go out. We go and just whatever, whatever we wanted, however we wanted. You know what I'm saying? And I had all these people around me. <clears throat> I had really bad people around me. Um, People that, you know, some of my friends would get out of jail and I was doing what a real motherfucker do quote unquote, he walk out and putting jewelry around his neck, keys to an apartment, shit like that, stupid shit, right? And these people, like I did this for everybody, like I just treated everybody well. When my case came and I was on house arrest, not one of them, not one came by, not one, only one guy, and his name is The Beast. Shout out to The Beast. He's in Castle Grand, Arizona. He's a tattoo artist now. But he came by. He was a Mexican dude. and um, But he was somebody that never wanted anything from me. I never gave him money. I never bought shit. He just wanted to be down, you know what I'm saying, with the squad. So he's the only one that would come hang out. He'll come over. They'll make carne asada, marinate it. We cook, you know, kids play, whatever. That's the only one, bro. I'm talking about I had an army of dudes, right, that all benefited from me in some way. Even if it's just having fun every weekend or whatever, because that's important to young motherfuckers. Not one, bro. One guy, <clears throat> one guy stole from me, right? This is, they were doing this when I was in not, or when they thought I wasn't in a position to do anything back, because nobody did this when I was strong, when I was on the street. Nobody did nothing weird, you know what I'm saying? And actually one guy did, and he had to move out the state, <laughs> you know, it was like that. So nobody, everybody just shitted on me. I'm like, 
wow. When I think back on it, I'm like, like when I was going through what I went through and everything, when the shit hit the fan, I was like, yo, like, it's crazy. So I'm spending money, spending time, risking my freedom, risking my life, trying to impress people who don't give a fuck about me. And I look, listen, I'm pure, man. Like, I assume if people are fucking with each other, they fuck with each other. They give a fuck about each other. But that's not reality. I would never use people. But most people will use people, you know? You no using we're supposed to use each other, each other, not abuse or not take and not reciprocate. You know what I'm saying? So I experienced a lot of that. So um finally, shit hit the fan. The darkest days of my life. I had so many dreams of me going to prison. Like I had been to jail before a bunch of times, just getting caught on just getting I never got sentenced or or, or, or or anything. I always slide out, you know, figure out a way out or just don't say nothing and, you know, they ain't got nothing on me, they gotta let me go. But this time, it was bad, right? The charge was really, really serious. The charges was really serious. They got an ankle bracelet on me, so it's looking bad. So my money is getting, I paid an attorney, a, a retainer, you know, and I didn't understand how that worked. I thought I'd pay him and then he'd do his work. But I pay him and every time I talk to him, that money goes down. He's like, yo, your retainer's up. We need another 25 grand. I'm like, huh? So that, I was still trying to do my thing on the street, but it wasn't the same because I was limited and people knew that. So I'm getting taken advantage of. So I had to make some really risky moves to try to keep paying my attorney. And that didn't work out. Make a long story short, I abscounded from justice. I became a fugitive. That was the most terrifying shit I ever dealt with, you know? Because I'm thinking everybody is a cop or undercover cop or a snitch. And they all knew me and where I was at and everywhere I moved. So paranoid. My biggest fear was like, being taken away from my kids, you know, and not seeing them until they're like adults. Fuck. So, all right, before I ended up doing what I had to do and facing the charges, but it took a, took a little, little time, some years before that happened. In the beginning, as I'm living in California, initially I was homeless. Um, I had places I thought I was able to stay, but I don't think the people that said that I can stay, I don't think they thought that I would be free that long. So I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm here. And they were like, nah, you know, and rightfully so, because I'm bringing a lot of heat with me. And none of my friends was doing legit shit at the time. So, or transitioning out of the underworld. So I'm like, fuck. I, I remember I, I wasn't, that didn't bother me. I had way bigger problems, you know what I'm saying? So I fucking was in a, it was like a crossroad. Do this, the wrong thing, and there's a high probability of you getting caught, or just try your chances of getting a job. One thing that was very consistent in my life, even when I was doing the dumb shit, was I trained. I was always in shape. I mean, I, we could find some throwback pictures of me. I still had a little size on me, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I got a job at a gym as a trainer. So going through that, they paid nothing, right? So that shit was rough, but I was able to save up enough money to move in with somebody that was looking for a roommate. So prior to that, I was staying at a friend's brother's apartment, but only at super late at night. He's like, you can come like after midnight, but you gotta be out before the sun is up. Cause his apartment, he was growing marijuana plants, which is stupid, cause it's an apartment, not a big complex, it's a small apartment complex in Long Beach, like eight units. Uncooked marijuana plants have a very distinct smell. 
it's, it's super obvious. And this is when marijuana wasn't legal in, in, in California at the time, but it was, it was working on it. So, well, actually, it was legal, but it was, that wasn't legal. You couldn't do that. Excuse me, but people were trying to get ahead of the curve. So anyway, so I would just shower at the gym, you know, in the morning, kept the haircut. Nobody knew I was homeless. Nobody knew. So I, I saved all my money and got moved in with this cat lady. <laughs> I never forget. She's a cat lady. I found her on Craigslist. She was looking for a roommate. A little tiny room. The room was so small, I had a couch bed in it. The bed, I couldn't have the bed open and close the door at the same time. I had to fold up the bed, close the door, or open it, whatever. That's how small it was. But fuck it. It felt like a mansion. And keep in mind, I'm coming from having a damn near mansion. You know what I mean? So that period, though, was rough. I would like, I try to close the, the book on my life previous to that completely as a defense mechanism and not to stress me out. But it's hard because it was so fresh in my memory and me wanting to check on certain things. And um, lo and behold, why did I do that? Because I see people talk to one person. They're like, oh, yeah, they said da, 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 da. People was talking so bad about me, laughing, happy. You know, like suckers out there was like, felt impo- like, yes, like he's gone. Like, I'm the man. Like, you're not. So that and people that was my, my guys, you know, really wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Um, scavenging for whatever I left behind or whatever, you know, it's just bad. And bro, <clears throat> the anger, you gotta think I'm I'm afraid that I'm gonna get caught any day. And it's a wrap. Um I have no money. I'm used to having a lot of money to having no money. Um I'm just I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. And then I'm like Prison don't scare me at all. Being away from my kids scared me. And then going to prison and having to defend myself and getting in more trouble. I know a lot of people who went in for like jail time end up doing prison time because they were getting fights. You know, it just escalates and you get more and more time. There's more charges. So that, that worried me. So I have all of this shit, all of these emotions, man. And I was just fucking in a dark, dark, place and um lo and behold my kid's mom she was like you want you want elijah i'm gonna send elijah out there with you i'm like yeah but i'm like how why i don't have money i don't have a car he'll start kindergarten with you and yada 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 i'm like yeah i always have been the, the guy to take on everything and figure it out you know what i'm saying i did that with my kid and um why she did that, she's a very fucking logical person. And she got her shit together. I have no idea why she sent them. Because that doesn't make sense for her. But I'm so glad that she did. Because he showed me, you know, we started kindergarten. There's a kindergarten a school right up the street. Walking down to the school, the whole nine. Is that Long Beach? Yeah, yeah, Long Beach. He held my hand, like he, you know, and when he go in. I'd stare at the gate and just stare at him the whole time until I couldn't see him no more. And but he is happy to see me when when he's out of school the whole night, bro. I never until that day I never experienced love like that, you know. And uh, he uh, basically the way. The way that my, um, my son showed me love, it, it told me that um, I could love myself. That unconditional love. It told me I, I could. If this guy, this guy is perfect. He's a pure soul. If this guy can love me like this, then I could love myself too. I didn't love myself. I was reckless. I was down to cause violence and, and hurt people in a way that would put me away for a long time. I didn't care. You know, I was a risk taker, you know. <sighs> but when I, bro, I can't explain. It did It did something to me. It reminded me of that movie with Denzel Washington when it was him and his son and he lost his job and he's walking trying to sell those machines. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It was just like that, bro. 
So he put me on an upward trajectory, man. And it's something with him. The dude is the dude is the dude is special. When he was born, like his eyes was like just wide open and just aware. You know, actually all my kids was like that, you know. Ivy and Kaya and but he's a boy and it was just his eyes was just that day when he was born, I was like, I don't know what it is, but it's something here with this guy, you know. But he saved my life. His mother saved my life by sending him to me. And I'll forever be thankful for that, you know. Um, but that pulled me out of depression. I used to like on the weekends, Saturday, Long Beach, downtown Long Beach is really dope. The weather's good. There's always people. I was very social. I, I wanted no parts of it. I would lay in my room, close the door, and try to sleep all day. I try to sleep to get to Sunday, sleep to get to Monday, and go back to work. You know what I'm saying? I try to sleep time away, you know? It's kind of like how it is in jail. You try to sleep your time away and shit. But I was in jail, outside of jail. And... um he made me want to live, bro. And uh, and that's what happened. I started living. I started doing good things and being involved in other people's lives, training people. But it was deeper than that. Like, my bond with my clients was was heavy. Like, I used to be like, why do y'all keep coming back? You're in shape now. You know what to do. But they kept coming. And we would talk. It would be all kind of shit. You know how it is. You deal with people, too, on that level. And that just grew and that grew and that grew, you know, to where we are now. But I did have to go to jail, I had to deal with, face my charges, and luckily, you know, the, the court was like, you're not a criminal, you know what I mean? So, um, I do feel I have a second lease on life, you know? Was it just a switch that was flipped at that moment, or was it somewhat of a process that took a little bit of time? Was it instant? Tell, it was, tell us about it, that. It was, a, it was a process from before shit hit the fan, like even when I was out in the streets doing my thing, but it wasn't that drastic. But it was a, it was a, it was a process in terms of um, me knowing how, how wrong this is what I'm doing and how I'm living because I know better. When you know better, it is worse, right? They say ignorance is bliss, that's such a true statement because I wasn't ignorant to the consequences, I wasn't ignorant to me knowing that I know better and I can do other things. Um, you know, I wasn't ignorant to the fact that I'm putting my my woman at danger, you know. So, um, but, and before that, I went through some deep shit that I'm not really going to talk about on here right now. I'm not ready to talk about that shit. But, and that shit was working on me. But, you know, when you're, when you're default is to is violence is to react is to be a lion that shit overpowers sometimes the good shit that's building because the default is easier to do it's an easier emotional it's in alignment with your emotions right which is not good so it was difficult i know it sounds stupid but it was very difficult for me to not go and park in front of people's houses and wait for them to come home and do shit to them. It was hard for me not to do that. It was hard for me not to say, fuck it, well, fuck it. Have anyone ever made you mad to where you feel like, like a thermometer, you know, it has mercury in it, it just shoot up and you're just red. Have you ever felt that? I have, but I'll say not for a long time, a long, long time. Right. I've, I've had that a bunch of times and, the, and, when you, just like lifting weights, when you stress your central nervous system enough to hit that heavy shit, you can hit it, right? It's easier to do. It's the fight or flight, you fight. But when my shit was fight in the wrong way, it was like, pop, I always hit it. I always got spiked, but that's because my lifestyle was always in places and situations and circumstances that caused that shit to happen. And then... There's circumstances around me being who I am in the streets, me having to be the example, the leader. Bro, like one of my one of my big bros, he was a street dude too. He was like the realest. He got out. And he used to be like, why are you doing these things? You should not be on the front lines. You got soldiers. 
I was like, I gotta do this. So they can, they know what's up, you know what I'm saying? Because me having all these people behind me, following me, do, down to do whatever, I don't ever understood why. So I felt like part of me was like, let me show them that I'm capable of great violence so they stay in line. Because these guys were, some of them were more dangerous than me, were down to do dumber shit than me, right? But I felt like maybe whatever cool they see in me, plus the fact that I'm real and I'll do these, these things, got to keep them in line. I don't know what I was thinking, bro. But what, isn't that, I think that in principle, it sounds like it would work. Yeah, and it did work. But it's no honor amongst thieves. But once you're not, you're not perceived to be as strong as you were, the other lion's going to try to come in and pounce, you know? And this is not honorable because it's not lions. It's not for survival. It's people wanting to be the man. Have all the girls, have people look at them in admiration, stupid shit, shit that don't matter. So, you know, but anyway. But that general principle does work. I mean, we, we try yeah. and lead by example. Yeah, for sure. Show people. Still do. Yeah, that we're, we're capable of doing all the things that we would ask them to do. I mean, whether it's clients or employees in the office or people that we work with as partners, like, hey, we're willing to do the dirty work. We're willing to do whatever it takes, but it's not truly dirty work. It's, it's fair, honest right. work that creates value for the partner or mm -hmm. for whoever we're helping out or working with in this case. I guess you could say dirty work in the sense that we technically can have people doing some right. of the shit that we do, but fuck it. We want to do it. Yeah, we can do it. We talked, we've talked about this, not going to get into details about this other company we're starting. If we go this way, it's an easier end or we have to rebuild everything. I'm like, fuck it. Let's, let's, that's what we do. Let's build it. So we, that's the shit that we're on, you know, and I think it comes, it's in our roots, you know, yours and mine. Mine was just illegal shit, kind of, but even before that, even the boxing and the hard training, because look, you know, and to all the boxers out there, you know, or fighters now, MMA guys, you're, you're, you're a weirdo. You're not on a team. There's no football. I'm not on a football team. I'm not on a basketball team. So I had to be alone, training hard as fuck getting hurt, all of that shit, you know what I'm saying? So we deep, we're deeply rooted in some different shit, which is good. You know, unfortunately, a part of my life, it took a turn for bad. Um, I'm glad that I didn't succumb to it. I'm glad I didn't die. I'm glad I didn't go to prison for a long time or any of that kind of shit, you know? But the things that I went through, I did learn immensely from, and I have a great appreciation for life and for living and for being good, just being good, do just for the sake of being good. Do you ultimately think that you still made a choice to not be depressed, which was like the original question? Did you make a choice or, or were you almost like left with no option because of how uh, your son's love influenced you? Was it, was it still a choice that you had to make and you're like, wow, I've got this behind me. It's worth doing it. Or do you feel you didn't even really have a choice to be made? It just happened automatically. I think that everything is a choice. So I think it is a choice. It's still a choice, you but know. I think that's important for someone who might be listening to this right now and be like, well, it, it was so easy for you. But I think you still, even feeling that love from him, I think even more, maybe you felt the responsibility like, okay, I've got this love and this is, makes me feel good and it's amazing. Now I have to do something for him and I have to get, you know, I have to change and I have to evolve and, and put my best foot forward for him mm -hmm. to take care of this love. So it yeah. seems like you still made a choice and people should know that because they might be waiting for it to wake up and just like magically feel all the way better. Right. Like everything's perfect. Now I can just smile and, and so, move forward. So here's the thing, Sean, not only was it a choice, it was a very difficult choice. Yeah. I seen the love from my son and all of that, but it was still a very difficult fucking choice. You know what I'm saying? The embarrassment of only being able to send his mom a hundred, two hundred dollars a month and shit like that. And, you know, it was a choice, bro. You know? And another thing I want to touch on, man, like I always prided myself on not needing help. I got it, you know, or I'll fucking make it happen. And um, bro, this one this one particular week, uh I went like two days without eating, right? And then I fucking, you know, I wasn't really in touch with my, I wasn't in touch with my parents at all. I would get messages to my dad through other people, you know, just letting them know I was all right, shit like that. But um, I fucking broke down and called my dad. I'm like, yo, 
I didn't know how to ask him for help. I never really needed help, you know? And it's just, I couldn't even say it, bro. Like, I'm like, you know, trying to be, you know, like I'm all right, you know, talking. And I just start fucking crying, bro. And my dad was like, don't worry, where you at? What city you in? I'm a Western, he Western you me $300. That was the best $300 I ever, I appreciated that shit so much, bro, for, to eat, for food. I would've been cool with $30 just to get me through two, three days. You know what I'm saying? He sent me $300 and that shit meant so fucking much to me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, shout out to my pops. He's giving me way more than that. You know, just teaching me how to be a man. But that day, that $300, bro, phew, that was a heavy day in my life, bro. It was like, it's not even like, let's say somebody win a million dollars in the lottery. It wasn't even that, it was better than that because I needed it. If you win a lottery, you don't really need it. I don't know, I guess, depending on your circumstance, but I needed that shit so bad. Cause I was wanna, these are the things that made me wanna lose my mind that was letting me drift to do bad things. Listen, people that, let's say like a troll on the internet or people that's being negative in comments, I can relate to this. They're, they're like that because their life sucks and shit is not good because when my shit was fucking, I wanted to kill people. That's how bad my life was. Like, I didn't care. I want everybody to hurt like I'm hurt. I don't give a fuck that you happy. What the fuck are you happy for? You know what I'm saying? Fuck you and your fucking perfect life. I'm going to take that from you. That's horrible. But that's how people feel when they don't have anything. Most people will never experience that. I don't even know the logic. But that's a thing. You know, and people start a fight in the club, it's because he doesn't have any attention from girls or something. You know, that he's missing something, you know? And um, you can call these people assholes or stupid, whatever, but it's a fucking thing, you know what I'm saying? And it just makes me think twice about judging people all the time. People still gotta be dealt with accordingly when they violate laws and rules and do certain things. But sometimes, man, people back be against the wall and they like, well, nobody else give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's hard when you have not, you know, it's not good. <clears throat> not a good feeling. So I think if anyone's listening to this and they find themselves in a scenario, probably not going to be identical to yours, but for whatever combination of reasons, they feel depressed or feel really blue or, or not the person they want to be. They should understand that it's not going to change on its own. There, there is probably, I feel like the universe will throw you a lot of different lifelines and opportunities to make a change, but you have to grab onto it, make a decision, and then move forward, and then you're going to have to make another decision. You're going to consciously have to decide that you want things to change on a daily basis until they do, until you finally feel, you know, the fake it till you make it. You're going to have to act like you're working towards your thing until you really get there. That's so true. Yeah. Remember the secret, the book, the secret, yeah. everybody was, you know, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? It, people have, it's this notion going on that people feel like things are going to happen because they want it to, they will it and they think it. No, it doesn't. What you said is spot on. You have to, it's a lot of things you got to do, you know? It's a lot of things you got to fix in your life. It's a lot of places that you got to go that you don't want to go. It's dark places that you got to face certain demons of yours. You got to, you know? So um, healing and all of that shit won't really happen until you do that. And, and I'm, I'm trying to say something to people out there that's hustling and doing things illegally. You know, I got a friend in fitness that's doing his thing and I'm fucking proud of him. A few years ago, a couple years ago, he came. I'm already doing my thing. Everything's good. He came. He stayed at my house for a day, and we talked. I'm like, so what do you got going on? You know, he came for me advice or whatever. And I said, and he told me something that he was doing that's kind of not on the up and up. And I was like, bro, two things. One, I can't fuck with you because I don't want to deal with nobody that's doing anything illegal. I just got out of a lot of shit. And two, nothing good is going to happen to you for you business-wise in this shit. If you're doing that too, there's not room for both. I'm like, trust me, I was there. It's impossible. It's one or the other. You can't have both, you know? And um, 
he took he took my word. You know, they say a word to the wise is sufficient. And he applied it and he he stopped doing the other things he was doing. And now he's fucking killing it. And I'm so proud of him. So proud of him. Because that's that shit is hard to do. I told him, I said, look, it's gonna be slow. The money ain't gonna be like you think it is or what you're used to it initially. But just so what? It's gonna come. Just gotta keep keep plugging away. That's the thing. It will come. But you gotta keep plugging away. You gotta keep uh planting seeds. The more seeds you plant, the more fruit will harvest. It's a simple equation. It's just gonna take a while. And he did it and he's doing great. And I fucking I love that dude. He know he know he is. That's my guy right there. I'm not gonna say his name, but that's my fucking guy. So um but yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? We keep it short, you know. Um, I just wanted to, because they, they said it on the, um, the Q&A thing on my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, at Mike Rasheed, and at Sean Torbati. But I've been doing the Q&As lately, and I wanted to answer that question. And uh, but I'm like, this is not enough. I need to, I need to really, because it, it, it pulled it, it tugged at my heart a little bit, you know. So I'm like, let, let me talk about this. Let me unwrap this and talk about it. So that's why I wanted to get on and, and kind of talk about it a little bit, thoroughly answer their question. And people that's going through depression, look, I get it, man. That shit is hard. You want to do nothing but sleep or die or hurt yourself or hurt other people. None of that shit is going to help. Here's the thing. Life is not fucking perfect for nobody. We all have our fucking obstacles for real. But here's the thing, something that my dad taught me, I always repeat this, and it's so fucking true. You grow through these things, and you have, uh, you build character when you're faced with these things, and you deal with them properly. Because when everything is peachy, that's not, that's easy. You're not getting, you don't get a pat on the back. Look, we don't get pats on the back, and we shouldn't get a pat on the back for feeding people when we go to these cities. That's so easy for us. It's, it really is. I'm, I'm being honest. It's easy for us. I can easily do a, a, a Instagram call to action, have people meet up. I got almost a million people on Instagram. Some We'll get 50, 100 people. That's easy. Go out and feed people. That's easy. It's when we don't have shit. It's when we have $30 to our name and a friend of ours need gas money and we give them 15 that's character. When we don't have excess and we still give and we're still kind to people and we still smile and we don't complain and we don't fucking, you know, head down and kicking rocks and just, you know what I'm saying? That's when you build character. And it's something that I've learned. I'm not perfect, but I've, I think that I've been dealing with my adversity pretty, pretty well. And I haven't always dealt with it well, but I think I've been dealing with it well for a few years now. And it's just making me so much stronger to where Every time I'm dealt, I'm faced with something adverse, it's not as bad. You know what I'm saying? You have built up such a tolerance and a resistance towards it. And I know if I act like this, this will be good. But if I know if I do this, however strong those emotions is pulling me to do this, I know it's not going to be good. I know it. And whenever I have done that, I'm like, I just fucking failed the test. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... Anyway, yeah, depression is real, it's real, but we can, we can mitigate it by just faking it till we make it. Like, this is going to be all right. This is going to be, man, nah, I'm going to be good. And doing things, being positive. Like, look, people, I was showing you yesterday some of these videos I was, I was shooting. I was, I was wearing pants all the time and boots. I had an ankle bracelet on, you know what I mean? It would have been easy for me, like, no, nah, I don't want to do shit. Because that shit, bro, the shit was, I'm not exaggerating, as big as a speaker. It was a GPS uh, a thing. It wasn't the regular. And it was because I cut the one off before. And it was metal around, with rubber around it. You cannot cut that off. You got to plug it up to a wall six hours a day. If you even drive by a Greyhound or any kind of transportation, airport, whatever, they call you from the thing. What are you doing? Rude as fuck. It's fucking depressing. But I didn't let none of that bother me. You know, it bothered me, but I hit it. And I fucking shot my videos, promoted product. I still trained people. I kept it positive. Nobody knew nothing. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
that shows you right there. Like, and what is, it's like, what is he being happy for? He might be going to prison. You know what I'm saying? But nah, I'm not going to prison. I'm gonna keep planting seeds. By the time this shit come off my leg, my shit, shit, my shit should come to harvest. You know what I'm saying? And that's how shit, shit has been. You know. Any final words? What do you think that someone should do if they're listening to this right now and they're like, "That's me. I, I feel like that," or "I have been feeling like that." What's the first thing that they should do if they're listening to this right now and they're like, "I don't want to feel this way anymore. I want to feel." different than this and I know and they believe you they believe us that they can what should they do like right now first of all you got to think about not just yourself think about people around you right they got problems too you just don't know what they're dealing with right or their problems might not be right now but nonetheless everybody got their problems so first of all your friends or your loved ones they'll talk to you they want to hear you out they want to help you but Keep that shit to a minimum. Your situation, I know this sounds harsh. I had this conversation with somebody I really care about and love a couple weeks ago. Your situation is not unique, just like mine wasn't unique, you know? I'm, I wasn't the only person with my freedom hanging over my head, you know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. I'm going to be honest with you. It's hard to pull yourself out of that shit. It is. But you can pull yourself out of it. You got to really fucking want to. Not And you saying you wanting to and crying is not really wanting to. You doing things. Look, I wanted to be strong. So fuck. I started putting nickels on the fucking bar every time I went to the gym. And then play, put the plates on top. Then I put tins. I did everything I could to get strong. You know what I'm saying? It was hard. It's hard, right? You building your squat, your bench press. The shit is not... It's times where you want to get to that heavy, heavy set and like, all right, we good. Like, no, you got to keep going. You got to do another one close to that weight. That shit is hard. It stresses your body out, but you do it. You're building character and you're becoming stronger in every sense of the word. It's the same thing. You can't just, you can't say, I want a stronger bench press and think it's going to happen by just doing the same shit. You got to, you, that's what I'm saying to y'all. Yeah. You can't just want to get out of it. You got to do the hard shit. The hard shit is getting out of bed today. That's hard. And it's okay that that's hard when you're depressed. You know, you're dealing with shit in your mind that most people ain't, right? So some chem somewhat of chemical imbalances, right? Dopamine or whatever the fuck ain't as high, you know? So you got to, you, you still have your mind, your brain. You know that getting up and, you know, taking a shower, making your bed, clean your room, try to feel good about yourself, do something positive. Call somebody you haven't talked to that, that loves you and you love and talk to them, somebody you've been avoiding, or even correcting. Sometimes when we're depressed, we've done something to somebody and they don't, you know, they like, fuck us. Call them and apologize. Try to make that shit right. You know, um, do was difficult. That's showing that you want to be better, that you want to climb out of that depression. It's a climb. Climbing is more difficult, you know, so... Know that I'm not saying it's not hard. I know it's hard. But if you really want out, you will do what you have to do to get out and seek help, too. Nothing wrong with that. But really try. Just because you're seeking help, they can't pull you out. They can be there for support the whole nine. But you, nobody can pull you out of your shit. Just like nobody could pull me out of You're one of the smartest people I know. But there's nothing you can say to make me do the right thing or pull me out of my shit. I got to want to do it, you know? So I think what they can do, and I'm just thinking out loud, is that, like you said, you can't decide to be undepressed, but you can make a list of all the things that you, every single one of us, me, you, and whoever's listening, we can make a list of all the things that we can do to change our situation for the better right now, Inclu not to become undepressed, but what can I do today? What's the list of things I can do today and moving forward to make myself feel better and improve my circumstance. It might be, uh, like you said, clearing up some um, misgivings in personal relationships. It might be getting back in the gym. It might be getting a new job. It might be moving to a new place. What are all the things that you can do different? Because really, whatever you've been doing isn't working. It's like when people come to us talking about nutrition or training and they're like, yeah, I have a good plan uh, for my workouts and my diet, but you're there, you know, obese. It's like, no, you don't. 
you do not have a good plan. Mm -hmm. It's not working. Everything you're doing is not working. So let's let go of your inputs uh, of what you think is good because we're going to have to probably reprogram you and give you something fresh and new to get excited about. Because if you've been doing this for two, three years and your weight's the same or you're gaining weight, it's not working. So we have to let go. And oftentimes... But, but here's the thing. It's them. Yep. It ain't even a plan. Right. They not working. Right. They not doing what they should be doing. Right. Not their, the plan they have in their head, but whatever they're actually doing is not working. Right. And that's the, right. the, the reality of their plan. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're feeling this way, if you're feeling depressed or unhappy or just miserable, whatever the term we're going to use is... Everything you've been doing has led you there. You have to recognize that first. Then you can start analyzing which of these habits we can attack one at a time. Because eventually, if we start doing these things one at a time and taking responsibility for our role in everything that we do, mm -hmm. we'll change our circumstances. 100%. And I say, this all, I say this all the time. It's so real. Life is what you make it. It really is. It literally is what you make it. So... So is every day, every mm -hmm. opportunity, and every moment. It's what you make it. Because right. you could be upset, but still have, change it around. I mean, like, this is something that I've worked on, you know, in my, in my personal life with, with RP. Is like, if, if we have an argument and a disagreement, I could flip it around any time. Just, it's a decision. I could either carry forward negativity because we disagreed about something that was probably trivial or I could just flip it around. I love you. It doesn't matter. Like it, whatever just happened, it doesn't matter really. Like it's cool. And then just give her a kiss and we're going it, to, it's fixed instantly. It, but the old me or, or another version of myself would carry it forward a little bit longer and continue to make us both more unhappy versus just fixing it. So we have that power. Uh, that's one of my biggest realizations in the last six months or a year is that at any moment we have the power to change how we feel. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Should I? Uncle T just hit me with a message. He said a battery died. Who knows which one? <laughs> but we up out of here. Thanks for sitting with me, my man. All right, bro. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. We out of here.